Jay Crawford, Adam the Bull, Garrett Bush, Tyvis Powell, Jason Lloyd. Plus, ba da 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 you're loving him, Mikey McNuggets. And so many big names, it would take me hours to say all of their names. The ultimate Cleveland sports show starts now. Booyah! Happy Friday and welcome to the month of March. And welcome to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show on WKYC Channel 3. I'm Jay Crawford. Coming up in the next 30 minutes, amongst many other topics, we will talk about the Cleveland Guardians' refound power. Fluke, or is there something to it? Tyvis? I'm Tyvis Powell, and I'm going to talk about Tristan Thompson. Is he an important Cavalier or not, G? Uh, listen, G. Bush here, leader of the Kool-Aid Mafia. I'm going to let you know why the Browns could be named the Brook Park Browns coming up. McNuggets. Yeah, and a Chiefs player was alleged of leaking game plans to no, the a Jets opposition player. while he was a member of the Jets. And if that were to happen in Cleveland, oh. how would the fans react and how should that player be punished? It'll be a fun conversation. Yeah, that, that is a wild, wild story. We're going to fill you in <laughs> on all of that and, uh, and have fun with that. Before we dive into our topics, though, I have to say, before the show, we were rehearsing the open, and Tyvis said, I'm going to tell you why Tristan Thompson is the most important Cavalier. And I looked at him and I'm like, Tyvis, you're not going to say that. And then you changed it to, is he an important member of the Cleveland Cavaliers? You see that? You, you, you got to be quick on your feet. Jay. I got you. <laughs> judge, uh, judge um, you, know, you know, my client would like to plea bargain. <laughs> yeah, he plead down <laughs> from the most important <laughs> Cav to, is he even an important piece to the Cavs? Yeah. We're going to talk about that. But we start with, and this is really a fascinating topic. And I'm not sure if this was a McNuggets topic. I don't, I don't know who came up with this. but It was me. For better I, I think it was you. And, and I is. thank you for waiting until I got back from spring training because you know how much I love to talk about baseball. But the Cleveland Guardians have hit eight home runs <coughs> in five spring training games. That is correct. But I do want to say, the chase the louder home run, Steve, take tag board full. Traveled oh. far enough to be two. So in my <laughs> that, own personal that record books, <laughs> they have hit nine home runs in five games. Yeah, I, see, I see what you did there. Here. Yeah, take a look at this, guys. Ooh. I oh. mean, he cadillac it. He, he stood there and, and admired it, and why not? That thing was out of the park. So, yeah, they've got eight in five games. Now, last year in the regular season, they finished dead last, and they were dead last by a lot. Yeah. I think they hit 127 in 162 games. Correct. It's, it's abysmal, particularly when you consider there was a team that hit more than 300 mm. in the regular season last year. Is this a fluke? Is it a product of the Guardians making a philosophical change at the plate? Because Will Brennan told me <coughs> in spring training that, oh, yeah, this is being talked about. This, we're, we've, we're pivoting from being a contact team mm -hmm. to not suddenly becoming a power team, but we want to hit more home runs. How is this happening? Why is this happening? Uh, focal point. Focal point. Listen, the thing about... Being an athlete, you hear the noise. All season, that's the only thing everybody's talking about. Y'all ain't got no sticks, G. Bush. We ain't got no sticks. We ain't, the games aren't excited because we're not hitting home runs. You hear that for a whole offseason. You know what you do that whole offseason? You do more push-ups. You know, you start getting at that plate, and you start focusing on hitting home runs. And I think that that becoming the focal point of an offseason has translated to them guys, especially in spring ball. Go out there, swing for the fences, and they making some really good contact right now. I'm on record already saying that they're going to be a top five team in home runs this year. So, so they got to wow. I, I, I said it last year. I said it last year on the show. Mm -hmm. So they're proving me right. And you were wrong last year. No, no, <laughs> no. Because I didn't, I didn't say, I said for this upcoming season, they will be top five. I didn't say they'd be first. I said they'd be top five this, in home runs. This is a pipe dream. Uh, <laughs> and this is a made up story. There is no way you know what. What? The Guardians is hitting bombs like this. What they, you mean? They just don't have power hitters. Is is so, so, uh, team? Did, did you not just see that home run just get hit? Hey, I, you know, we talk about preseason all the time. I think the most useless preseason games happen to be in baseball. I mean, pitchers is out there like, listen, let me go out there and I'm going to only throw curveballs. <laughs> That's all they worked on. And they go out there and be like, you know what? J you know what, Jay? Gee. Let me just do a bullpen session. Let me let me get through 21 pitches. I'm going to throw all fastballs, see if I can locate it. If you this just, don't count. Do you agree that if you do it once, you can do it again? That, that logic works for, for, for Mighty Bites and little children <laughs> playing in hot stove. 
That yeah, you just saying. So you bomb that thing, you can you can do it. You can hit a home run again. Well, listen, all these guys can hit. Miles My Straw point, can exactly. hit home runs. By the way, Miles Straw added ten pounds in the offseason, and it's all muscle. He's completely redeveloped his body, mm. and that tells you what. To your point, they hear the noise. All of the players that I spoke to, either. Will Br- nobody was as emphatic as Will. Will's like, oh, yeah, we've moved our philosophy. Our point on the horizon has moved. Yeah, others put it a little differently in saying, look, we, we knew that uh, we didn't have success last year, and you've got to keep up with the times. Stephen Kwan talked about that. You've got to be relevant. You've got to play the game that's being played around you. Mm-hmm. And the game that's being played around them is the three-run home run. And I, I do think that there is, a, there is definitely an added emphasis this season on home runs. Now, I don't know that that's necessarily coming from the Tito to Stephen Vogt switch. I think these points on the horizon are developed by the front office and the organization as a whole. And they were all in on the contact and run. It worked in 2022. They made a nice little playoff run before losing to a team that hit home runs, the New York Yankees. Yeah. After after watching last year unfold, I think it was Will Brennan brought up this point. They lost 31 games last year by one run. That's astonishing. That's almost half their losses. Yeah. With this pitching staff, they are going to be in the vast majority of games. Yes. If you can average a half a home run a game more this year than they did last year, which is very doable, extremely doable, you turn half of those 31 losses into wins. You win 16 more games last year, you walk to a division title. You walk there. So I think this is a good move by the organization to pivot. Mikey, can, is there a way that we can figure out how many home runs they hit last spring training? By the end of the show, I'll have that. Number okay, because I, I'm, I only ask that because that would be an apples-to-apples apples comparison. As for why they're hitting more home runs this year in spring training, I think, yeah, they're taking more chances with swings, mm. not afraid to swing and miss. But I also, look, it's not hard to hit home runs in spring training games. You're pitching against pitchers that no one has ever heard of and that will likely not be on major league rosters. The five, the first five games <coughs> the Guardians played, they didn't start any of their starters, of their five starting pitchers. Yesterday, I think Xavion Curry got a start, and then uh, yesterday I think was the first day where Gavin Williams threw. He's going to be one of the five starting right. pitchers. It's the first time they threw one of their starters. So a lot of things happen in spring training that you can't carry over to the regular season. I would be curious to see how many home runs they hit last spring training because that's an apples to apples, but. I do think they're, gonna, they're not going to finish last in home runs this year. They are going to hit more than 127. They will not finish in the top five. Ever. That's a massive, massive leap. Stop it. They won't. The Rays did. You've got the Dodgers <laughs> and the Braves hitting 300 home runs. Mm-hmm. A, a, I didn't say two first. home runs a game. That's I know, crazy. but the disparity between where they are now and the middle of the pack is a huge leap. You have no faith, Jay. I have a lot of faith. You have no faith. But my eyes don't lie. So, and I don't think they can go from last to fifth. We'll see. We will see. Talk to you in October. <laughs> All right. All right, Jay, this next question is something we got a lot online. Anytime we've asked fans for viewer comments or viewer questions over the last two weeks, we've gotten this one. So I figured it's a perfect time to bring it up here. And we got it from a bunch. So I didn't put any specific name to this via social media, but just know we listen and we see your guys' questions. If Jimmy Haslam does decide to move the Browns to Brook Park, build a new stadium out there. Will the team change either its nickname, its colors, its logos, none of the above, all of the above, one of the three? What say you? I'm very disappointed that more than one fan would ask that. I'm I'm, I'm being dead serious now. It's crazy. There were multiple fans that fired this question I would say upwards of at least a dozen. Wow. You know why this is a question, right? Because secretly, some people don't like the Browns colors and scheme. you can change your colors. The Buccaneers did it. You can change your colors without changing your name or the city in which you play. There is not a city called Tampa Bay. That, that city does not exist. That's true. There is not the New York Jets and the New York Giants. Not only do they not play in New York State, play in Jersey, they don't play in New, New York, York City. Yeah. yeah. They don't call them the New Jersey Giants or the Meadowland Jets. Actually, a lot of teams don't play. Think <laughs> about that. I, mean, I, just I, a lot I of would like to know what the number is. I bet it would be upwards of half of the league. When, <laughs> when the Lions played in Pontiac, 
They weren't the Pontiac Lions. The fact that you're, the Los Angeles Rams and the Los Angeles uh, Chargers. Chargers do not play in the city of Los Angeles. I believe that's Inglewood. <clears throat> And when or you, another suburb of LA, Angle would correct. When you look but, at when you look at people asking this question, um, there's a couple of teams who will never change their their look, jersey colors. The Cleveland Browns will always have brown jerseys. Um, this area is very conservative. They will never allow certain changes. The helmet will always look the same. They like might the Cowboys, change. the Cowboys, like the you, Steelers. The Steelers, like, Steelers never. It's change iconic. Anything. You know, they, the it people is. And, and the name, and I think there's legislation where the name can't go anywhere else. Can't, like when the, when the Browns moved the first time, they fought for the name. They fought for the colors. So And the record. And the record. So it's like Brook Park, no, every, every other team nationally does not play in the city limits. It's just all about finding the land for the stadium. Uh, Brook Park won't even be mentioned. They'll be like, live from Cleveland, Ohio. It's the Browns versus Bengals. <laughs> <laughs> and they might, in that open, they might say, you know, live from Brook Park, Ohio. They I, I, when That's they showed fun. like shots of the Silver Dome and stuff, they would say Pontiac, Michigan. Or, but they're never called the Pontiac Palace Lions. Auburn Hills. Yes, the yeah. Dallas Cowboys don't play in Dallas. Arlington. So yeah. I, I just think that I'm really I'm disappointed more than anything. You know, we're behind. It's like when a parent says, you know, w- w- the worst thing a parent can say to you is, "I'm disappointed." Maybe that because like- I have more expectations of our fans to think that we would actually. Now suddenly become the Brook Park. What is our logo look like, anyways? Well, like what that's you, a good if you question. was to say the Browns logo, what would you? What would well, you? lately it's, it's been the Elf. You know they brought the Elf back. You didn't see the dog. I mean, yeah, I'm disappointed, but, Ty, but you played for the Browns. No, I'm, but it, but the helmet don't have nothing on it. I, I no. mean, they're not going, but they do have stuff in the middle of the field, and they did come up with a nice little. I guess dog, like they they, they had got a dog that got the fans elf. submitted. I think the problem is that you know you bring up a good point. We do have a bit of an identity crisis. Are we elves? Are Our we dogs? dogs? Yeah. Like I what know. are we? We don't have cheerleaders or a band. No. There's no pomp and circumstance. And we used to have the we used to have all of the pomp and circus. I, I've been watching a lot of old '80s Browns games, and uh, <laughs> all of them talk about everybody. Dan Marino came in there in 1993 or something during uh, Monday Night Football, and they all talk about the dog pound. They all talk about oh, yeah. Cleveland. Now it's just kind of like maybe. By the way, if you're listening, if you go back to Brook Park, can you bring back the dog pound? Make it unsullied down there. No <laughs> children allowed in the dog pound. <laughs> no, to, don't, don't bring your infants. We, we want it back to the junkyard dogs in the end zone. Can we get that off? Yeah, corporate uh, Corporate has taken over that wing of sport. That, and we'll never see that again. The Jets game, it felt dog poundish. A got, lot, lot of barking going on. It did, and, but you know what? You never said it wasn't rowdy. It ain't rowdy. As someone who <laughs> sat multiple times in the real dog pound, trust me, there is nothing that even comes close to that. Yeah. At at Cleveland Brown Stadium. The good old days. We got to take a break. When we come back, we ask the question: Is Tristan Thompson the most important Cleveland Cavalier, or as Tyvis would make the addendum, is he even an important Cleveland Cavalier? Stay with us. Welcome back to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Shout out to McNuggets and our crack research staff. We asked how many home runs the Guardians hit last year. 26 in 32 spring training games, which is very close to the ratio that they hit home runs at the same pace of the regular season. So they are well above last year's pace. Top five, here we go. Almost a homer and a half per game. See that? Through the first five games. It's very early, folks. All right. Um... I love this topic only because Trist, uh, because Tyvis changed his answer so so drastically. The question as it read was, how badly do the Cavs need Trips, Tristan Thompson for the playoff run, or do they not need him at all? And you on this answer have gone from, oh, he's gonna the most important Cleveland Cavalier, to yeah. is he even one of the important Cleveland Cavaliers? Yeah, it's a... Uh... Because th- when you think about it, if there, it depends on JB's lineup. If JB continues to run the two big man lineup with yeah. Mobley and Allen, then yes, he's important because now you need somebody to come in and take, still get rebounds when those two are getting a blow or one of them is off getting a blow. But if he, as we discussed, Trey's changes this lineup in the playoffs to be where Allen's in and Mobley's out and they switch for each other. 
that he won't be as important as much as he is. But I tell you what, after watching that Chicago game, we did miss him on that rebound. No, we definitely missed him sure. on the rebounds. Now, for one sure. thing about Tristan, maybe he's not the greatest scorer, but that man gets rebounds. And right now, that's the only thing I think about right now is that Chicago game. How much we missed him in that Chicago game because he has that attitude towards him. You know, yeah. he's not going to let somebody push him around in the paint. He's going to be physical in there. He's going to get rebounds. And that's something that he can hopefully get to Mobley and Allen when we come playoffs. Yeah, man, you, you always need a goon. You need a goon come, come, uh, you know, playoff time. You need somebody with the ski mask on. <laughs> that when somebody fouled Donovan Mitchell, you get a dude to be like, what you doing? Get off Donovan Mitchell. Get, get. Ooh. You need that goon attitude. Now, T-Top, he ain't going to give you much as far as points. He ain't going to give you much in terms of what he was do, able to do. Back in the day, people would forget Tristan Thompson was one of the first guys that helped the Cavs beat the Warriors because he could switch off. He wasn't giving up too much off the pick and roll. You can you show, he can ice. He can do all those different things. So uh, Tristan was, was a value part. Now he's more of a... It's more of a, a, a emotional leader. He's he's more of a, a Jared Allen. Don't you take that? You ain't got to take that. <coughs> Next time, I don't need you. Don't take that, Evan Mobley. He's one of those guys. So you need one of the dudes on the roster. I think that it, it, he'll he'll pay dividends when you play in those teams, the, the Bostons and, and and so on and so forth, the, the Sixers and stuff. Yeah, I, I agree with that. The enforcer role in certain series. There's going to be some matches matchups where I don't think he's needed. Right. Mm-hmm. There will be other matchups where you're going to need that body. You're going to need that effort. What I love about him is the effort on the rebounds, the defensive side of the floor. However, I think to properly answer this question, you have to ask another question. Who is Trimps, Tristan Thompson in 2024? Because when, when, when a player tests positive for performance-enhancing drugs, steroids, HGH, you have to ask yourself, why was the player using that in the first place? Mm-hmm. Did the player realize that he had lost so much that in order to stay at the party, mm-hmm. he needed the sauce? Mm-hmm. And I'm afraid that the answer in this case might well be yes. So he may not be the Tristan Thompson without the performance enhancers that we saw in the first half of the season with. And Jay, you got to look at it like this. When he first came back, I did notice a little bit. My man, Tristan ain't got the lift he used to have. Like, okay, I'm thinking Tristan was a, a rim runner, energy guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He could out jump guys. He quick jump. I'm, he get to the second jump quicker than everybody else. But you got to re- remember, Tristan Thompson is very undersized. Yeah. He is not seven foot. He's not six ten. Tristan Thompson to me may be six foot. Six. You look at look at him and LeBron in some of the more games. He he looking right at LeBron like six foot seven, six foot eight. He might be that, but he was always able to do it because he was had energy. He had that quick bounce and he had that tenacious attitude. He still got the tenacious attitude, but that bounce it leaves us all at one point in time. What attitude will come in? We, yeah. That's the one thing I think we were missing in the playoffs against the. And Knicks. that's in your DNA. Yeah. Like I think he'll still have that. The yeah. question is, will he have the energy? Hopefully, to bring it while he's out on the floor. One of the reasons that players use steroids, and I'm not sure exactly what he used. We could probably. I find had it. Yeah, I looked it up. It is. Uh, Ibu Tamorin and S A R M L G D dash four zero three three. Do we know what the benefits of using that drug are? Because some it's recovery, <coughs> and if it's a recovery thing, you can understand why someone at his age yeah. would need a little recovery help playing in the NBA. I don't know what the properties are of that steroid. According to a quick Google search, it allows a person to increase body mass, grow lean muscle, and negate body fat. Okay, so maybe he was warding off the body yeah, fat. Okay, yeah, that's not that. Okay, I, that, that brings me hope that he can still bring the energy. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't sound like it's a stimulant to, right. the, to the system. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, I, the proof will be in the pudding. When when he comes back, we'll get a look at what he looks like, and I, I do think there are certain series that the Cavs could potentially play in that first or second round, depending on how the seating goes, where they could absolutely use the Tristan Thompson that we saw even at the beginning part of this year. Yep. So he has a role, and in the playoffs, it's all about roles. Mm -hmm. It's all about finding the right combinations and the right pairings to go against whatever lineup you're facing at that time. It's just another tool in JB's bag to be able to go to if he needs an enforcer, high-energy type guy. So he's important. He, I would put him in the mildly important category. Mildly. I would not call him the most important Cavalier. All right, we're taking a break. When we come back, what should happen if you find out one of your teammates 
was actually helping the enemy. It's a curious story, and we'll discuss it on the other side. All right, welcome back to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. This is a fantastic to uh, topic because if it's true, Mike, I don't know that McCall Hardman can play in the league again. What do, what do we have here? Yeah, so this is a crazy story. I'll give you the, the bones of it, but it came out on social media that McCall Hardman, who signed with the Jets in the offseason, was frustrated with his playing time, his role. He got beat out for the punt returner job by a rookie, Xavier Gibson, was clearly unhappy, which is why New York traded him to Kansas City in the middle of the season. But several players, including Sauce Gardner and Kenny Uboa, along with punter Thomas Morstead, accused him of leaking game plans to opponents, Kansas City and Philadelphia, during the season. And now there's a whole kind of scuttlebutt back and forth about what should happen to McCall Hartman moving forward. So to bring this to Cleveland, let's say, and I'm not even going to name a player because I'm not accusing anyone, obviously, but if a Cleveland Browns player was accused of leaking game plans to the Ravens or the Bengals or an opponent, what do you think the proper punishment for that situation would be? I don't know that there is one. I, uh, I can't think of anything <laughs> worse a player can do. I'm with Jay on this one. Like, that's – how could you ever be trusted again? You can, that's the thing. That's why like, I ask, is this a career-ending injury like you can't. Him? You can't be back in my locker room. Who would want you in the locker room? And, so. and now he's wearing the scarlet letter. Whether or not the story is true or not, there are multiple teammates and multiple media outlets that have looked into this that are claiming – it is true. That's that's man. Like so that's perception not the, becomes but reality. But that's not the way to go about it, though. Like, of course not. Like you can just ask for the release. I request the release, or so, stay so. there, get your money, <laughs> something, and, and like, go on to the next job, right? Something. Like, why would you help? Gee, you've been in locker rooms. Is is there? Could you possibly even look a teammate in the eye again, man? If no. this was being whispered about him, you can't do. I, I'm 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 sorry. You can't do this at. If you are any job, any high level job, like when you no longer are working there or you're disgruntled, like that's like us coming out and, and we go into another place and the first thing they do is say, Tell us all Jay Crawford and uh Tyvis Powell's dirt. You're like, Yeah, that's whoa. Why would you, yeah, like why what would you, you talking about? Good? Like, no, I listen, I, I enjoyed my time. I don't care if that person was mean to you, uh, or you was there was a bad person you think. I broke the you code. all you automatically just out of professional respect and courtesy, you never air nobody out. Not only did he do that, he gave him the he that's, that's the snitching to the highest. That's degree. what I'm saying. He, like you gave him the you're game. You're essentially plan. a traitor. Yeah. You're helping the other team hand your team and your teammates a defeat because you're not happy with your personal situation. I can't think of a more selfish act a player can can do. Is I guess, he still getting paid? He, I mean, well, he got traded to Kansas City. and He signed a – it wasn't a one-year deal he signed with the he's, Jets. It, oh, right? So he's there next year. I would imagine Because so. I'm sorry if I'm – and I know that they know him. The Chiefs players know him. This is his second trip there. Well, he got a ring out of this deal. Yeah, I understand that, but, like – can you look at this guy and, and not be, at least raise an eyebrow? They'll, maybe wonder? they'll look at it and say he, he's loyal to us. Nah, I'm going to be mad. Listen, but at, in the back of your Kansas City, that was one of the two. Alleged yeah, in the back of your team. mind, you got to think if he did this once, he'll do it. He'll do, do it again. Do they, play, do they play those two teams? Does, does the Chiefs play the Jets next year? Uh, I don't Jets know if they the do. Uh, I don't think so, but I'll tell you in one second. Well, or, to get to your question, Mike, which ultimately is what, what, would, what should the punishment be? I think the punishment would be to trade that player to your rival so you can clean his clock twice a year. <laughs> the pun That's what I was getting at. The punishment is going to be if they play the Jets or he's playing against guys. That oh. they're, they're, he better watch himself. And I'm not saying it just because I – listen, I ain't got no, 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 no dog in a horse or, or, or horse on the, on the show. He better watch it because dudes take that seriously – and he might, he might, you know, going across the middle. He might get a cheap shot. He's going to get a couple. Yeah, couple. that just, that just I, I, when I first read the story, I, first I read the headline, and I'm like, this can't That's be That's why I said, true. there's no way this is true. But the more I read, the more I was like, man, there's a lot of smoke around this story. Why it doesn't we? always mean it's true, but if it's not true, it's a, it's a, a coordinated conspiracy to tarnish this man's name. I asked you, would you take him on the Browns? No, I don't want him. What are you talking about? Would you take him on the Browns? <laughs> no. See, that, that, Kansas City would be that, the only team that's the that punishment. he plays for. Yes. That's the punishment right here because there's a bunch of people around the country saying the same thing. Would you? Would we take him on our team? 
And they're like, no, not if he's doing that. No, you can't never, you can't trust him. We're out of time. Thanks for watching the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. We're back Monday, 11 a.m. Eastern on YouTube. See you then. Peace.